Nagbabalik tayo dito sa Kababayan today. Ako po si G. Tonji. If you're just joining us, we have a distinguished panel of people that work in the community that are advocating for um, human trafficking and how we can end this problem. Uh, it's a very big problem. It affects our community. It affects our loved ones. And we need to talk about this. So, kasama natin, pag-usapan natin, uh, Kuya Lester, sa tingin nyo, bilang isang Pilipino, ano ba ang mga kondisyon uh, bakit umabot sa ganitong sitwasyon ni Mary Jane? Alam mo, si Mary Jane, isa lang siya sa almost 6,000 Pilipino na umalis sa bansa kada araw. Kada araw, yeah. 6,000 Pilipinos. Pilipino. Dahil sa kahirapan at sa kawalan ng trabaho sa Pilipinas. At yung gobyerno ng Pilipinas, may pakinabang siya sa mga sa tax ng remittance galing sa mga overseas Filipino worker. Oo nga naman. Mm. Yung ating ekonomiya sa Pilipinas mm. ay napakaganda dahil sa lahat ng mga OFW na nagpapadala araw-araw mm. ng pera sa kanilang mga kababayan. Ito yung tinatawag nilang label export policy. Ini-encourage ng gobyerno ng mga Pilipino na magtrabaho sa abroad. Pero uh, wala naman natatanggap na asistan o suporta ang mga OFW galing sa gobyerno. Sa katunayan yung halos lahat ng member ng uh, migrante sa Southern California ay biktima ng human trafficking. So nakarana sila ng mga abuso galing sa mga employer nila. And the same time yung hirap at lungkot na malayo sa pamilya. Oo. Kaya migrante sa Southern California ay patuloy na gagawa ng mga aksyon hanggang sa tuluyang mapalaya si Mary Jane at makauwi sa Pilipinas. Mm -mm. Kuya Lester, mahirap no? Kasi ang hirap tanggapin na the biggest export of the Philippine mm. Islands is its people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That hurts! Yeah. And... I mean, I grew up in the Philippines. Yeah. My family is still in the Philippines, but I left the Philippines because yeah. just, you know, at kung nasa ma maraming level yan, di ba? But um, when you think of the fact that in the Philippines, if you are born and raised there, you have no chance to get out of that situation yeah. of or that poverty unless umalis ka, maging mm. katulong ka, maging di ba, domestic helper ka, lahat gagawin mo para lang mabigyan mo yung pamilya mo ng mas magandang kinabukasan. Hmm. Tapos ang nangyari, pag alis, nandiyan yung nangyari, April contemplation. Eto mm -hmm. si Mary Jane. Asa narinig natin, dami mga Pilipino na abuso, na re -rape. Mm -hmm. Ayan, saan, no? So, kakalungkot isipin, yun ang talaga, kung may trabaho lang sana sa Pilipinas, umaunlat sana Pilipinas, so wala na sana siguro isang very gay na mangyayari. <laughs> Kuya Lester, uh, yung, <laughs> yung sinasabi mo, tumatama talaga sa akin, no? I can really feel uh, your heartache because, you know, it's sad. It really is sad. All of us kababayans mm -hmm. here, our relatives, our family members had to leave our homeland yeah. because of a... Wala! Walang wala tayo doon. At miski ngang meron na nga eh, umaalis pa rin. Why is this problem happening? Kuya Lester, bakit? Kasi nga, do sa... Nakita nila walang pag-asa sa Pilipinas dahil lang yung gobyerno natin, instead na mag-produce ng mga trabaho sa Pilipinas, instead na magbigay ng servisya sa mga tao, ginagawang business ang lahat ng ayon siya ng gobyerno. So kung so, paano pa rin sila makakita, di ba? Yeah. Uh, at the expense of their Filipino people. Okay, Nicole, let's talk about this. What has been done for Mary Jane? What do all of you here advocate for? Why are you so passionate about this, this situation? I think the, the case of Mary Jane is actually something that really um, touches the hearts of many Filipinos because her story is our story as Filipinos here in the United States, abroad. Um, you know, her story really resonated with me because my mom too had to leave the country in order to find work because of the lack of economic opportunities. And so I think that's why we saw such amazing unity amongst Filipinos, our kababayan across the world, thousands of people, even non-Filipinos in the international community came together. They were doing everywhere from petition signatures to making phone calls and us here in the Los Angeles region, even visiting the Indonesian Consul General um, and even making those um, letters, you know, to 
to really appeal for her clemency, to really appeal to save her life. And I think that's what really saved Mary Jane, is the fact that there was people power behind her. And I think that was the most inspiring thing about her story was that, you know, her family had, had struggled to go to the Department of Foreign Affairs to ask for their assistance, but for five years they were neglected. For five years there weren't answers. And for five years there wasn't that assistance that was necessary. And so that's why uh, the family had to turn to Migrante International. They had to turn to people's organizations such as buy-in to really advocate on their behalf and stand shoulder to shoulder with them. And what we saw was this, this beautiful organizing that was happening worldwide uh, that really captured the minds and hearts and the attention of even the Philippine, Filipino president and the Indonesian president to say, wow, we really need to pay attention to this issue. And in fact, you know, Mary Jane is a victim in this scenario. But unfortunately, like what Kuya Lester had mentioned before, uh, the fact that they continue this labor export policy, particularly mm. President Aquino, who has been advocating for it, who has been advocating for PDAF, uh, even his own pork barrel, these are things that are really upsetting for us because, you know, it really shows that he doesn't have a genuine concern for the welfare of overseas Filipino workers. If you continue policies that force people to move abroad mm. instead of creating jobs back home, what other options do Filipinos have but to really be torn apart from their families, to have a phone relationship with their families, uh, and also be vulnerable to trafficking schemes such as this. And so our concern is that uh, instead of taking credit of, for the, the victory of saving um, you know, Mary Jane's life, I think that the Filipino president, President Aquino, should really be uh, challenged to really uh, end this labor export policy and really focus on creating jobs for our kababayan. All right. Thank you, Nicole. Pagbalik natin, kausap naman natin si Deaconessa, and we're going to get to the bottom of this issue here on Kababayan Today. We'll be right back.